Buenos dias todos. Hello everyone from Las Vegas on Labor Day 2024. For those of you that don't know, Helen and I have elected to spend our summers in Mexico and we just got back yesterday, been gone for exactly 90 days. And um, here's just a recap of what you can expect when you come home the, to a yard that's had absolutely no maintenance for 90 days in a brutal Las Vegas summer. And let me start off by saying I tried to prepare the yard for this by mulching it heavily and uh, making sure that the sprinkler systems were right. Our son was here, but he's not a gardener. He was just taking care of the inside of the house and the dog and that kind of stuff. But I don't know, there's some surprises uh, here. And um, I expected some casualties and sure enough, there are some. Let me start over here. And this can give you an idea of how brutal the summer was in Vegas, even this sumac here. Is a little bit thin, but I've seen some of you gardeners posting stuff of uh, stress on your sumac. And one of the reasons mine is stressed, see all these uh, retaining blocks here? They were around that until just before we left, and I made some changes. So those roots are not uh, perfectly set and obviously have no mulch on them. And uh, so that. That gal's stressed, but she'll be okay. Fig tree, this was cut back to the ground when we left, and it seems to be doing okay. Mulberry, this is the Shangri-La, and she's showing a little bit of stress too, but I know there's uh, four sprinkler heads down there. This tree gets an ample amount of water. I'm gonna have to check all these to make sure they're running correctly, but, um, Again, she's a little stressed, but going to be okay. Um, this little, this little, um, well, I'm having a brain fart, but you know what it is, a palm, little palm tree. It always does this in summer. Uh, it'll spring right back and be okay. This was a brand new Miwa kumquat that I put in, and uh, it's toast. Actually, the rootstock on it, believe it or not, or the lower part, even above the rootstock, is still alive. But she's overstressed, and that's two years in a row. Because last year when we went, I had this in a 27-gallon um, sip, a sub-irrigated planter. And uh, the top of it burnt up. Uh, I put it in the ground, and all of it burnt up this year. So little tree, not well enough established. That's the problem there. And then... As I said that I mulched everything heavily, shrinkflation got me. Just about every year I'll order a load of mulch from either Lowe's or, or a Home Depot and uh, put another top coat. This has been about four or five, about six years uh, with mulch <clears throat> on this property. And last year I, I ordered 80 bags, so 160 cubic feet uh, of mulch and it wasn't quite enough um, initially I ordered about three pallets so 120 bags maybe you know that'd be three pallets be 180 bags but anyway <clears throat> this year I knew I needed more so when they came on sale at the um, uh, during spring I just uh, called and ordered a hundred bags thinking that would be enough and I didn't pay attention to the articles, my fault. They were on sale for their normal uh, five for ten dollars or two dollars a bag, and that's what I expected. They delivered it. I looked at the bags and said, hmm, something don't look right. Well, the bags are no longer two cubic feet, they're 1.5 cubic feet. So last year, 80 bags, 160 cubic feet was not enough. This year, I order a hundred bags at the same cost and got 150 cubic feet. It was too late. We were getting ready to leave um, to go down to Mexico. <clears throat> I didn't have time to adjust it and order more. So that's um, a minor problem here, but that's what's happening to us in shrinkflation. Over here in the rest of the front yard, <clears throat> you're going to see some darlings of plants to have, some things that are going to struggle, and some things that I could have changed. 
uh, the Vitex tree, eh, if you want something with color, can survive everything, there it is, right there. Um, you know, if I would have been here, I would have cut this back, and I will here in a day or two. Rose tree under it, of course, it's struggling this time of the year. It's going to be fine. It'll be back. Key lime, right out here, this is facing south, so all of this gets brutal sun all day. Oh, this one did fine. It did not set any fruit this year. Lemongrass overgrown. You know, that's one of those you can kind of set it and forget it. This is a Washington Naval Orange. And obviously, she is damaged. Um, and it is strictly sun because this tree was one of the first ones I put in in the fall of 2017. It gave me a couple of oranges that year. Has not produced a single fruit since then. I've cut it back and um, tried to graft to it, but I waited too late in the year and the graft didn't take. So I just said I'm going to give it a little more time. So here it is, and this is the very first time since 2017 that it has actually held on to some fruit. So uh, I'll trim this up, get rid of the dead stuff, give it some TLC. And uh, it'll be okay. Um, <clears throat> Yellow bells, another one of those set it and forget it kind of things. I had left this one a little taller this year. I usually cut it back to the ground. That's what it does every year. It comes right back. Fig, one of the stars of the show uh, for Las Vegas if they get enough water. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about in a minute. I left my hole here. <laughs> Um, this tree is a couple, three, four years old, and you can see figs can get as big as a house, but you can keep them contained with proper pruning, and this one I have, and it looks just fine, gets a little bit of protection from that western sun. Pomegranate looks in great shape. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these trees, but uh, it looks good, uh, so pomegranate is one of those that are just not oh, required to be highly maintained. This fig, however, has some damage. So what's the difference? That one's been in the ground for three or four years. This one I put in the ground last fall. Even though it's a larger tree, I had it growing in one of those SIP containers, sub-irrigated planters, for a couple of years. So oh, I'm just going to count this one up. It's only the top that is damaged. Everything is okay down here. It's still even holding on to some fruit. But this top portion is toast. I'll just cut this back and it'll be fine. You can see down here where I've already dug around to check. The moisture level is fine on it. Uh, it's getting plenty of water. I measured the emitters. I know what it's getting. Uh, I just don't think the roots are established enough. Uh, for this one to make it. White sapote. Uh, it has survived in ground for five years. Um, it's alive. It's going to be fine. But this one, and these will fruit in Las Vegas also, they can survive the winter, generally. But just too much southern, western exposure this lady needs to live in a different place. There's a moringa seedling that popped up while we were gone. I used to have a, I had a moringa tree here for five years. Oh, uh, you're going to see a, a, um, kind of a symposium of things here in the same idea. This is the Aussie mulberry, uh, growing here. She's in pretty well perfect shape. Get a load of, I hate pots, especially in the summer in Las Vegas. Get a load here of these 27-gallon, again, SIP, sub-irrigated planters. They have a about a 7- oh, or 8-gallon water reservoir down at the bottom. I usually water these at the top also, but you can just put your water and your nutrients in here. It goes right down to the water reservoir. Uh, these survived remarkably well. They're a little crispy. They've got some damage on them, but remarkably well. Um, Fukushu kumquat, again, a little damage, but she survived. It's a first-year tree. Um, I'm happy she's okay. 
look at the aloe over here now I've got water sprinklers going into this but these just got water every three days like everything else did and then two more examples of figs in pots you're not going to get good high quality fruit leaving these neglected but um, I'm just pleasantly surprised at these sub irrigated planters there was even a ripe fruit on this one this morning she's a little dry not high quality fruit I'm gonna leave it for the mockingbird uh, maybe my favorite overall fig has got some fruits on it that are ripening up up there this is my black Madeira and on the east side of the house in between me and my neighbor and uh, this one's been in the ground since 20 fall of 2018 did real well another fig tree that gets some afternoon shade four or five years old looks fine no problem there some of these figs may have a chance to ripen before we start seeing 50 degree temperatures and the birds have feasted on these there's one that's overripe and I can tell that it's hollow and dry let me open up, yeah. That one's not worth eating. I'll leave it for the mockingbird, too. Uh, here was a disappointment as we go through the gate. Low quiet, low quiet, low quiet. We know that they survive our winters just fine. They need protection the first couple of summers, which this one had the first couple of summers. I have it planted against my east wall, protected from the western sun by my house. And it's been in the ground for four or five years. And had I seen this and noticed it, I would have called my maintenance guy and had him come over and just put the shade cloth back over it. Oh, uh, I had a shade cloth running here and protecting this thing and it was beautiful. And it's still okay, believe it or not. Let's look here. New growth is coming out. Oh, this tree's going to survive. But I think what the problem is with this one, I know it was getting plenty of water. You see where the sprinkler system drains out down here. But I think because it is in this small area with this retaining wall, uh, I don't think it's got enough roots to support the tree and um, I'm gonna have to think about this uh, a new location would be okay but shade cloth would have probably prevented that Valencia orange holding on to some fruit um, as I back off from it she looks okay but she's thin so heat stressed um, Mandarin quite looks great but heat stressed also uh, it's got it's going to give me some fruit. But as I look around down here, it's been dropping fruit all summer. And again, the size of the tree for the area that I've got it in and the amount of water it was getting, I don't know. Believe it or not, the <clears throat> base of this Owari Satsuma is still alive. This gal did the same thing to me last year. You can see right here. She died off from here up while we were gone last summer. Uh, and it gets way sufficient water. I know that it gets plenty, plenty, plenty of water. And on good enough intervals. See how moist that soil is down there? Uh, I'm going to strike this one up to either the tree itself or the variety. <clears throat> and uh, this one's going to come out and replace it with something else. Bougainvillea doing fine back there. I hate this one. This one kind of broke my heart. This is Golden Nugget um, Mandarin. And um, she's toast. You can see where I've done some scratching down here. And um, it's just, uh, it's gone. This one may have been my fault in planting it in trying to get the root. Um, plenty moist under there. And trying to get the, um, the root flare in the proper place. I actually planted it a little bit too high. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. I tried to fill that in. I think it was okay. But anyway, pepper plant, yeah, who's surprised? Uh, Meyer lemon, okay, stressed. 
a lot of the fruit scalded from the sun. The inner fruits that are on here are okay. Um, but she's just got some stress. She'll be okay. Look at this monster. I cut this tree back uh, to just the trunk of the tree. It was always here. Totally barren. And I was going to graft a weeping mulberry. This is a uh, dwarf ever-bearing mulberry, mulberry, by the way. I was going to graft uh, a weeping mulberry on that, and I kind of did before I left, but I can't tell if the grafts are good or not. I don't think they are. But look how this thing has grown in three months. Outstanding. Still don't know what I'm going to do with this tree. <laughs> Brand new Oro Blanco grapefruit. Toast. It's gone. Also, brand new um, chocolate persimmon. It's gone. These are my fault. I should have put a shade cover up on these two before I left because they were brand new trees. And so, uh, that's uh, I'm going to chalk that up to being my fault. Some stuff overgrown needs to be cut back. The figs back here, some were stressed. This is not as thick as I would expect it. Got some dye back on it, still holding on to some fruit, but uh, I don't know. This one's been in the ground for five or six years. You can see again, I keep it contained. Trumpet vine toast is coming out. Another mulberry. This is another Aussie. Needs some trimming up, but she's okay. Another year, this one will be perfect. The almond has got some stress. Um... Again, getting plenty of water. Uh, I don't know. Uh, things that have no problem. Castor. These are growing all over the side of the road in Mexico. Wild. Castor does fine through the summer. I don't know what this is. I can't remember. As a matter of fact, I don't remember putting anything there. Kind of looks like a leafy green of some sort. Big mulberry tree. We know they're okay. It's showing a little sun stress. These things do this every year. Not a big problem. Uh, this is a Tangelo. Hmm, three months, I can't remember. Barely survived. Nugami kumquat, toast. It's gone. Uh, this is a second year tree. I was hoping it would be okay, but yeah, she's not. Roots still feel fine, might be okay. Pear tree, again, a little thin. Uh, but generally okay some of the fruits got a little scald on it but these will be ready they're not very large but these will be ready in another month or so another fig tree again it's a little thin not producing any fruit that tells me it's water again maybe too much tree for the area I've got for its roots and again western exposure direct western exposure to this fig tree and it's just damaged some the Asian pear, uh, if I had this to do over again, it wouldn't be Asian pear. They just, uh, they struggle here. I love the fruit, but they don't do as good as the European pears do. Um, the fruit is never large, like we see in the store. It is good, but this has a nutrient deficiency going on here. My first thought, if you see this, is fire blight. But it's really only on this one variety uh, here, which is Shinsinki. I think I have four varieties on here. And I think this one is Shinsinki. Uh, I'll try to correct that and, of course, get that damaged material off of it. But that's not fire blight. It would be probably in more places if it was. But anyway, I'll get it corrected. Another stressed fig plant. Oh, um, this one I just had two sprinkler heads to, and that may not have been enough. I knew it before I left. But this used to be my swimming pool also, this whole area here. And uh, with the swimming pool being here, it retains more, more moisture. Uh, and I guess I was thinking that it would retain enough that I wouldn't have to put, you know, 30 gallons, uh, 35 gallons of water on this one. but. Obviously, it needed it because it's holding on to no fruit. 
she'll be okay she'll bounce back i'll try to correct that stars of the show again sweet potato caster this container just gets water every three days uh, santa rosa plum mm, a little damaged but she'll be okay uh, peach tree um, florida prince a little damage too be okay mexican petunias put them wherever you want they're fine uh, just put them in a container unless you want them to take over the yard and again the next to the last thing we'll show you here is the um this is a panache tiger fig and i was letting this tree go to provide shade structure you can tell but again that western sun just a little too much some of the fruits drying up and falling off um, I don't know I know this one gets a lot of water but uh, is it just a stressful summer or not enough water I don't know uh, jasmine there that needs to be moved somewhere else it's not getting enough sun but looky here my buddy Jim Eddington be proud of me look at this banana now that is in a uh, whiskey barrel but that's also a sip uh, where it has a water reservoir in the bottom and it had a sprinkler coming to it this was the main trunk here obviously now there's two or three pups that come up here but you know just see what the difference is when it's got protection from the winds from that big fig tree and protection from the western sun uh, this was a real surprise to me I'm not a big fan of growing tropicals in Vegas. They're too much trouble, but this one, eh, I'm a, I might keep this one doing okay. Notice one thing. <clears throat> you didn't see a weed growing anywhere out here. That's what mulch will do for you, even though this was not as thin, as thick of a cover. You can see here, some of my pipes are exposed. Um, should have had more mulch down. That would have probably helped. But uh, generally, this is the most maintenance-free yard that I've ever had as far as weeds growing and things such as that. So, 90 days. Is it good or is it bad? I don't know. I'm kind of pleased with most of it. I hate losing <clears throat> a couple of trees. I don't know if I would have been here if I could have saved a couple of those. But there you go. When you leave town for 90 days... I told Andrew just to come out and water some of these plants about every three days, and we all know that's not enough in summer, but the aloe's good, the elephant's foot is good, that euphorbia died back. Uh, canna lilies are doing good, the asparagus fern died back, you can't kill these, it'll be fine. My uh, bird of paradise, si es no bueno, some of the other euphorbias didn't make it bougainvillea here is fine i give you an idea what some stuff you can plant and forget um, this is second year of being gone in summer and uh, i'm gonna have this dialed in probably in another few years some things are going to work and some are not i hope you guys had a great summer i'm having to adjust this heat it's 81 degrees this morning when i got up that usually was my daytime high at 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon in Mexico. Overnight lows to 65, so it's not jet lag I'm going to have to adjust to on this time. It's this heat. Welcome fall. You can't come quick enough. Buenas. Tides. Uh, everyone, I'll keep you posted. Look forward to seeing you guys around. Adios.